Hey guys, welcome back to House of Prep. My name's Jerry, for those still getting to know me. I wanted to talk about zombies. Now, not the actual zombies like The Walking Dead and such. Now, I love watching The Walking Dead. I think it's a great show. I've watched it ever since the beginning. Uh, it's had its up and downs and stuff, but this last year, this final season, has gotten uh, good again. Um, it's, it really shows what human nature can be all about when they're put into a bind. Uh, yeah, you have the actual zombies, like the ones that are, per, you know, that are there in the show, and people that are trying to survive from. Um, now, but people also can be like a zombie, right? And I wanted to use today's video to kind of talk about that, maybe almost as a precautionary measure video, right? Uh, first of all, you need to understand our society loves to live in the moment, okay? Uh, whatever happens to be going on in life, that's when they live for it. They just they just kind of go to and fro along with ever wherever the, the the stream, wherever the waves take them. Uh, that's just where they're going to go. They're just going to follow the wave, the current, wherever the current's going. That's where they're going to go. Now, as preppers, we like to think outside the box. We like to prepare ahead for those waves. Prepare ahead. For the current sometimes you can predict your own current you can you can kind of make your own wave uh, by by being able to prepare for life and prepare for, for crisis and events in life that can take place that we've seen take place look fear is contagious we saw it okay this last year and a half or so uh, fear is contagious in, in what it does is it drives people okay not just an individual but there can also be an emotional unity. You know, you find people that are like-minded like yourself, right? Kind of like we do even here at House of Prep. We have a lot of like-minded people, and that's what helps bond us and bring us together, even though most of us have never, ever met face-to-face. -face. And if, if perchance that would ever happen, and I to meet you face-to-face, -face, I'm sure we would get along just fine. We have a lot of like-minded people things in life. Now, not everybody's 100% down the board, but there's, there's, there's a consistent track record of, of us kind of getting along because we have the common goal. Now, people that are living in fear and didn't prepare, their goal has changed in life. Now, remember, they're living moment to moment. Their, their goal is now shifted from just their daily, you know, mundane living and just everything's there, everything they need's there to where now nothing's been prepared for. So their mindset has now changed. It becomes driven by fear, by panic, if you would like to say. Um, <clears throat> it becomes then a herd mentality. We talk about zombies, right? You always see on the shows, the zombies kind of herding together. Um, you know, they kind of have that common goal of consumption, right? Uh, their, their, their sole purpose in life now is to consume. Well, you kind of see that now with people that didn't prepare their consumption now is anything that they can find outside of their normal comfort zone. Uh, it's, it's being switched and they get that herd mentality now that, hey, you and I are in the same boat. Hey, so is they. Hey, these people didn't prepare either. We're all in the same boat. Let's go together and you can fill in the blank from there. I think you can use your imagination of what some of these folks would do. Um, let me, I gave this example before, <clears throat> but it's relevant, okay? Um, a year or so ago, remember when the great toilet paper run took place and, you know, people were out looking for it like crazy and it was an epidemic, right? It was just, it was a bigger epidemic than anything else going on is, is where's the toilet paper and no one could find it. And it was going to be the end of the world, right? Um, and I, I gave this story, the illustration of my wife and I had went to a store. Uh, timing just happened to be perfect. They had like one case of some toilet paper they put out excuse me, and as it was being immediately taken, we got a nice large package of it as well. Did our normal shopping. It was, you know, too large to bag, like most of the large packs are. So you just kind of have them sitting in your cart, right, with all your other grocery stuff around it. So we're heading out to our cart. You know, you could already see the eyes of the people inside. Everyone's going around trying to buy stuff. Stuff's out, right? You know, bread was totally out all kinds of things, odds, odds and ends and things, and people were just always, just had that panic look and just racing through the store, right? It wasn't an ease, 
laid back type of a shopping experience. It was very anxiety driven. So upon leaving into the parking lot, uh, another person that was getting into their vehicle was eyeballing our cart, saw the toilet paper. And they took a few steps and said, hey, where did you get that toilet paper? I was just inside. I've been going all over the stores. I can't find it. We don't have any at our house. And I said, yeah, we just got lucky in there. But you could just sense the weirdness in their eyes, right? Not that they were going to do anything. And I didn't feel threatened. I didn't feel that way. But I could sense that under more intense circumstances, under more stress under more fear of let's say no food no water hey where did you get that food where did you get that water my family is starving my family is dying of thirst where did you get what you have in your cart right there i could see how people who maybe once were just a normal citizen you know they lived by the rules they never did any harm to anybody i could see how that look in their eye can be intensified to a point that they have a choice that they may take action in order to take care of them and their own. And it was a reminder to me, and I remember talking to my wife about that, how the hairs in the back of your neck, even though you don't feel threatened, you still have those spidey senses, we call them, right? Going off and kind of reminding you, now that was just one person. Now what if you had several people in that parking lot where did you get that food? And, and they're all grouped up. Hey, hey, he's got food. Where did he get that? I don't know. Our family's starving. So is ours. And, and it's that herd mentality that begins. He's got plenty of food. Look, he has a whole shopping cart full of food. And hey, why don't you share with us? And, and if I'm unwilling to do so, what level and intensity are they prepared to bring? The intolerance of uncertainty, looking for a sense of control. Look, people are, are, are out of control. They want control in their life. As, as human beings, we're used to having some sense of, of a control, feeling like we have control of our destiny, per se, like where we're headed, planning for the week, planning for the day. They've lost that because they didn't prepare. So they've lost that sense of control in life now, and they're desperate, and desperation arises. So look, zombies on the shows we watch or very infectious, aren't they, right? We've seen that. Somebody gets bitten by the zombie, what happens? Well, their, their destiny is they are going to become a zombie as well in a lot of those type of shows. So so are fear-driven people. They're infectious. You know, you get a handful of people that are fearful in a room, and they start running out, hey, I'm going out, I'm buying all the toilet paper, I'm... I'm getting it because it's gone. We're, we're going to get it because this is all happening. And it's all it's running off the shelf. We're going to go buy it. What happens to the other people that are hearing that? Well, of course. Well, whoa, well, they said it. I saw it on TV, and now they're saying my friends are saying it. You know what, honey? I think we better stop and go get some more toilet paper too. <coughs> it's human nature, but so is it with the infectious of fearful people. It's infectious. It, it it's contagious. It passes it to everybody around them. You know, I was doing some research kind of thinking of this video and do you know that I was reading some different topics and different things and I came across some that said um, in a large group that a lot of times it only takes 5% of the people represented in that group to start down a track and the rest will follow. It's almost that sheep mentality. You know, we've talked about that a lot, right? You've heard a lot about that in a lot of different YouTube channels, a lot of comments that you read. But that's so true in a crisis situation. If you've got a large group of people, all it takes is a small amount to be the voice for the whole crowd. And everybody else kind of says, hey, yeah, we agree with them. Because remember, they're all kind of in the same boat together, right? And fear is infectious. So is unrational, being unrational. So is being unreasonable. So is heading down a path of no return that because driven by fear, by, by starvation, by thirst... It can drive a group of people. So now I don't say these things or create this video to scare you. What I'm doing is getting you to start thinking outside the box. Um, You know, yeah, you're good. Hopefully you don't have to go to the grocery store for anything when things hit the fan. I know a lot of you, we've talked, we've we've commented to each other. And this past year, there was times you're like, thank God I didn't have to even go to the store. I haven't even been to the store for a month. 
and I'm so glad I hate dealing with it. I hate dealing with the parking lot. I hate it all. So that's great that you got yourself in that position. Now, sometimes you want to go because, hey, you know, I have some perishables I'd like to stock up on. You know, the fruits, the vegetables, the breads, things that maybe you just usually just kind of buy fresh every week. And you're like, hey, I want to make one last trip. So here's some thoughts. Sometimes in that situation, when you know things are getting a little crazy out there, look, don't shop alone. I got some activity back there. Boy, he's talking. <laughs> but don't shop alone. Bring a family member with you. Bring a husband. Bring a wife. Have backup, right? Have somebody else. Remember, strength in numbers, per se. If you're totally alone and someone's approaching you, hey, where did you get that? Because there's none left and we're starving. Hey, where did you get this? Where being in a group of two or three people's helps deter when only one person's coming at you right or maybe two people are, are questioning you it makes it a little bit more intimidating if there's more than one of you right in your group um, look don't be a, don't be afraid to have a concealed carry self-defense tool don't be don't be ashamed of that. Don't be afraid of it. And a lot of you are like, absolutely, I don't go anywhere without it. And that's great. Because you never know what's gonna happen in life. But especially in an intense, fear-driven, panic-driven environment, when people around you are edgy, have something. Now do it legally. I, I'm I'm I advocate being legal. I'm 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 totally for that. But make sure you have some self-protection or or at least have a game plan in your mind that if it comes down to defense, that you do have a means of defense for you, for your, your items, and for your family, if you have your family with you. Stay alert. A lot of times you'll come out into the parking lot after shopping, right? You got all your shopping bags, you got all your, your cart full, you know, what's some, a lot of the first thing I see people do? Oh, my cart. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to hit you. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to get in your way. Oh, I'm glad that car stopped because I would have died. And they're on their phone. Do you know that somebody could be watching you? and could be eye eyeing you and knows where you parked. And they could be just standing there behind a van just waiting for you to come walking up to your car and fumbling with your keys and you got your phone, you're answering those super important text messages that can't wait till you get into the car, right? And that's what's gonna happen. And people that are desperate, people that are fear driven, people that feel like they have no rules in life can target you. And you're an easy target because you got your head down. Now, if you're alert and you're walking at a, a, a strong, steady pace and you're alert and you've, you're watching your environment, people tend to, let's skip them. Let's find the people that aren't paying attention. They're easier. Let's go for the low-lying fruit. Don't be the low-lying fruit. Stay alert. Look, have, have a plan of action. Be safe. Be smart. If you can park in a well-lit area, say you're going in the evening time and it's starting to get dark and you know when you come out of the store it's going to be dark especially with time changes and things going on in life and winter coming uh, park in an area or around a street light or an area that's lit uh, with foreknowledge that when i come out it's going to be nice to have this light because trouble likes to brew and to lurk in shadows okay don't get yourself caught into a dark place in dark shadows so anyway, these are things that, yeah, we think about, oh, I got the rice, I got the beans, right? You know, we're ready for anything. But you also have to plan for other events and interaction with the zombies, okay? Sometimes you have to pre-plan these things. And what are we going to do? Have that conversation with your spouses, with your family members, with yourself. What am I going to do? How am I going to be prepared to handle this situation? So this video was something off topic a little bit from talking about food and supplies, uh, but it's something that I felt was very, very important to share with you. So you guys have a great start to the week. Another great week ahead of us. I appreciate all of you. Keep doing what you're doing. If you don't mind hitting the thumbs up button on the way out the door, that'd be great. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and I will definitely talk to you guys later this week. Bye now.